If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the video. Hello, and welcome to the Talkies are back. This is going to be a, um, a series that I'm doing about secret hidden gems on Amazon Prime. And I hope y'all are ready because I wrote down like a whole bunch of lists of a whole bunch of movies and I'm going to be going through those for a series and then, you know, there's going to be more after that. Well, not, not it's going to be a different series, but this series is going to be this bulk series right now that I'm doing. And, um, okay, about hidden gems on Amazon Prime. One is Biodome. Do you remember Biodome? It came out way back when. It's about as good as I remember it. It was one of those things where it was like, oh, I remember Biodome. And it's like, all right, well, I remember it. And then like, I watch it. It's as good as I remember. Not bad, not not any worse, not any better. But um, as good as I remember it, it uh, has a seizure-inducing intro, which, <laughs> which I wasn't ready for. Oh, I don't remember that part. But um, also, there's a Tenacious D cameo in it. I would say it's not Polly Shore's best movie. Maybe Stephen Baldwin's movie, but I'd have to look into Stephen Baldwin movies to basically, you know, 100% say that. Um, also, it has a Phil Lamar cameo in it. If you didn't know who Phil Lamar is, he did a lot of voices on Futurama. He was the guy on Pulp Fiction that got his head shot. He um, was on Mad TV, the live-action Mad TV show, when that was running. Um, so that, that was cool to see him. And... Uh, the, the set piece that plays the Biodome is actually the same set piece that was in this other movie called Dead Heat with Treat Williams and Joe Piscopo, which I own, and that one's a wild movie as well. That's got, like, it, it's a wild movie. It's very interesting. Um, also, William Atherton? 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 I, hopefully I can put the uh, the word up here, Atherton, that's his last name. He, he gets to shine in this movie because his character has such an arc of being the lead scientist to these guys are wrecking my plans to I'm gone fully insane, you know? So uh, <laughs> his character gets a lot more art, more so than he did as when he was the bad guy in the first Ghostbusters movie. Um, I don't know if he was in the second Ghostbusters movie, but he was in the first one. He's the one that shut off the power and then, you know, got them to shut off the power and then let all the ghosts out. But uh, yeah, he, he got a, a, it was a good, good role for him. And uh, there's another thing, it's a, a thing by this band called Appalachian Indian, called Boom Shakalak. That, that was around a long, it was, it was a pretty big song for a little bit. It was like, it, it popped up here and there all over the place at that time frame when that movie came out in the 90s. Um, another movie that's on Amazon Prime that's a gym is called Black Holes. It's a proof of concept for a TV show. Now, the animation is very unique, very interesting. I've, I personally found it to be. Uh, it's dark comedy goofiness, um, and it's got this 2001 Space Odyssey kind of uh, vibe to it, kind of parody to it. Um, yeah, proof of concept. Uh, I, think, I think the problem is this, this video, this Black Holes video, is 12 minutes long, and within that, they say a curse word, and it's like, was that really needed? because there is 171,476 yeah 171,476 words in the English language so i'm sure we could say something other than that within a 12 minute frame on an animated show that could be geared towards more a wider audience you know i mean like it it could be it i I want it to be I want it to be successful because the animation is so unique and it's, it's so interesting to me but I think they're kind of limiting themselves with that and then also another thing is that it has this kind of uh, strangeness that it has this kind of strangeness and I think it needs to lean off of the strangeness and kind of go a little bit more with some light light oddness if it will you know the the, the what was it? it was a melon or something that becomes his co-pilot or something that's goofy that's funny but like it played so heavy-hearted that it, it's not as much fun as it could be that's my only pointers on that one I, I think i think another thing is that he says that he gets it he gets the ending of 2001 a space odyssey and that's all you get because he doesn't explain it but it's like it was a good setup for a joke you know because it's like i get it and then there's no punchline at all if, if that's the joke it's kind of it could be a little bit stronger you know it could have gone to a place where 
you know, he says something that's like, how did you get that out of that? You know, which would be funnier. But uh, yeah, it was interesting, very interesting, and worth a watch. It's 12 minutes long on Amazon. Right. Another movie is uh, Gringo. I watched this uh, today. Amazon Prime original movie, um, dark comedy, which I like dark comedies. You know. But um, the the film was very enjoyable. It had a lot of twists and turns in it. Um, a good good cast. Uh, definitely worth a watch. So if you have Amazon Prime, if you have Amazon Prime for just the shipping and stuff like that, remember that Amazon Prime also has videos. So uh, yeah. Also, Double Dragon is on Amazon Prime. If you haven't seen Double Dragon, this is a this is a very fun watch. It's basically a movie based on a video game that knows it's a movie based on a video game, so it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's one of those things where it really had it's, it's it was a fun rewatch for me personally because of the fact like I remember watching it way back when and it was just like it has these things where it's like oh that's corny but then it takes it up a notch and makes it a little bit more cornier to give you this kind of a feeling of them being self-aware of how corny they are and just really just having a blast with it uh, Robert Patrick is in there and he looks really well I mean he looks good I mean he's he's young he's and um, his character is Bad a character. It's it, it's a it's a more character than he got to do in T one thousand. But <laughs> that was a robot. Um, Annihilation is another one. I said, what, what, what? what's up? I'm talking to the camera right now. My huskies. I don't know, acting weird. I just finished walking them. I don't know what what, what this issue is. Anyways. Annihilation, and it is Natalie Portman, and also has, oh, I can't think of the guy's name. Maybe I can pop it up somewhere, or pop it up somewhere on this. And uh, the guy from Star Wars that played, not Finn, um, the fighter pilot guy. He's been, he's been in some really good stuff. He, he's an up-and-coming actor, or he, he's already up, but, but he's, he's, he's been in some really cool stuff. Age of Violence, he was in that, and, and whatnot. But Annihilation, it's like, this movie does not feel like it's made of pure nightmare juice. Like, it doesn't feel like it's a movie where somebody was like, I want to think of something that's going to terrify people. It more or less feels like somebody had a nightmare, woke up and directly pinned it, or had a multitude of nightmares, directly pinned it and formed it into this story, this coherent, your coherent story, because, wow, it is, wow, like, it's just a, a very interesting movie just wild made like like I said just made a pure nightmare juice sci-fi stuff um, also on net uh, Amazon Prime is Valerium and the City of a Thousand Planets if you have not seen this yet please please watch this movie it is great if you liked uh, Fifth Element it's like Fifth Element but bigger and better in every sense you know the thing that always got under my skin about Fifth Element was that the hero and the villain never meet up. Like, they're always, like, almost together in a room or something like that. But but the things they do, do uh, affect each other, but they're never in the same room together, which is kind of like, bleh. But uh, this movie was just very entertaining from, front, from, from beginning to end, just really entertaining and uh, definitely worth a watch. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's on Amazon Prime. Ooh, good news. Sorry, um, it's on Amazon Prime, and if you, like I said, yeah, Amazon Prime has some movies, and they have a lot, and so I hope you enjoyed this series, and I hope that, like, in watching this, you you find some stuff you're like, oh yeah, cool, I I, I would like to check that out, or that my review hopes hopefully brings you to being worthy of checking this out. Um, also, uh, if you like these videos, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. Um, Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe and whatnot. And if you like my videos, thank you for watching. And I will be coming out with more videos with um, hidden gems on Amazon Prime. Oh, another one Another one also is uh, Infinity Chamber. Infinity Chamber is kind of like a low-budget sci-fi movie. It's, it's one of those things where it's, 
an up and coming director writes this story and then he makes a movie and you can you can tell it's it it's built with this kind of where we don't have too much money and stuff like that but we put it all together and it ends up with great production value and a really interesting story but you know it it's like saw or something like that where you kind of you're kind of the, the 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 story is confined to this one kind of room and then you you seldomly get out of that room but like the the dialogue is just back and forth very very competitive and, and very worth a watch if you haven't seen it check it out um thank you so much for watching best day and best wishes to you and yours catch you back next time for next series next week yeah